when I think about sort of risk, right, it's really a function of three elements. We kind of have the hazard. We have the assets, kind of whatever is exposed, be that people or, or buildings typically, and then vulnerability is that third one. So mm. when we kind of have any of those, all three of those put together, that's when we start to have a risk. And I think to your point about tornadoes, that's why it's really, really tricky is because you have no idea what that hazard is going to look like, mm. right? You, you, in terms of magnitudes, we have scales, but in terms of where, when, you just have no idea the way you have a better sense, certainly with some other hazards, right? Flood is straightforward one. Yeah. You know, we have flooding, maybe not in historically mapped floodplains, but you have a general idea of where water is going to accumulate. Tornadoes, that's not the case. So yeah. in my eyes, then, then we need to start from a mitigation standpoint, looking at where we have exposure and where we have vulnerability. So I think, mm. you know, things like building codes come in there, right? We see the, 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 the amazing frequency with which tornadoes happen to hit manufactured homes, right? It, it, and that speaks to the vulnerability, both sort of from a building code, a built environment standpoint. And then when you take it a step further and think about the vulnerability, maybe of the populations that are statistically more likely to live in manufactured housing, then it makes it even more risky to put it that way, right? English yeah. is a second language, mobility, um, you know, the, oh. the personal finances, insurance literacy, all those come into that vulnerability in addition to the built environment aspect. 